Hi, my name is Steve Bowler. In this video, I'm going to be configuring Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, DHCP. Uh, I'm going to be configuring DHCP to run on a uh, Cisco router. And uh, what DHCP is going to allow us to do is to uh, automatically hand out uh, network information to, uh, to our client workstations and other nodes. Uh, like IP addresses, DNS information, WINS information, and uh, other information about you know our servers and stuff. So what I'm going to do is configure that on uh, router 1 here and we're going to use the cloud interface to emulate a uh, Microsoft loopback adapter interface uh, that, we, that I will also uh, install and show you guys how to do that. And we'll use the Microsoft loopback adapter interface to uh, to verify that you know DHCP is actually handing out uh, that information, and you know uh, we'll also verify a couple other things. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go ahead and configure router one and router two. So on router two, I'm going to configure the loopback interface. IP address 2.2.2.2 with the host mask, all 255s. Then uh, interface fastener 00, zero, zero, which is connection to router 1. IP address there is going to be 172.16.1.2, and that's going to be in a slash 30 sub, uh, subnet mask. No shut the port. And also, what we'll do is I'll just enable uh, OSPF process 1. Do that for network 2.2.2.2 with the wild card of all zeros, and that's going to be an area zero. And we'll also do network 172.16.1.0 uh, with the slash 30 wild card uh, bit, which is 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.3, and that's also going to be an area zero. Okay, router 2, looks like router 2 is done. What we're going to do is go to router 1. On router 1, interface loopback 0 is going to be the IP address of 1.1.1.1. Again, we'll give that a host mask of all 255s. Then we'll go under interface fastener at 0, 0. We'll give that the IP address 172.16.1.1 with a subnet mask of. Uh, slash 30 subnet mask, no shut the port, and we'll do router OSPF process 1, and we'll advertise those interfaces into OSPF uh, network 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. It's going to be uh, 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 wildcard bit, and we'll put that in area 0. Then we'll do here uh, Network 172.16.1.0, and we're gonna use this, the uh, wildcard bit of 0.0.0.3. .0 That's basically a slash 30. All right, so our OSPF process should come up here in a second. Our neighbor relationship. There you go. Okay, so as you can see here, we've uh, We've peered with uh, router 2. You can see their loopback interface, which OSBF uses as the router ID, the highest loopback IP address on uh, the router. If there's not, excuse me, if there's not a loopback uh, configured, it's going to go off the highest IP address of the interfaces on the router that uh, is in the up up uh, state. So. If the loopback, if there's no loopback on the router, it's going to use the highest IP address um, on the interfaces on the router that uh, are in the up up uh, state. So, as you can see here, again, that's for the router ID. You can see here our router ID is for neighbor 2.2.2.2.2. That's the loopback zero interface on router 2. Let's do a show IP route just to verify we have reachability to that loopback. Let's ping it 2.2.2.2. You can see we have reachability. Let's go to router 1. I'm sorry, router 2. Let's do a show IP route. 
as you can see we're learning the uh, the loopback of router 1 via OSBF which is the capital O go ahead and ping that 1.1.1.1 we have reachability okay so we're good to go now from router 2 to router 1 um, what we're going to do now is we're going to run through a how to how to uh, install a Microsoft Loopback adapter interface on uh, your computer. So what you want to do is you want to right, uh, you want to go to Start, Control Panel, and then under here, what we want to do is go to uh, Add Hardware, and then click Next. Then it's going to try to search for hardware that's been recently been installed. Um, okay, what we're going to do under here, we're going to say, uh, yes, we have already connected the hardware, and click Next. Then what we want to do is scroll all the way to the bottom and click Add New Hardware Device, click Next. Then we want to click on Install the Hardware that I manually